All right, stairway up. What have we got here? Nothing there. This man actually looks pleased to see you, and you can tell why. He's from the Empire. Looks like he came down very recently. He is sitting alone at this rear table, far from the Avernites. He is drinking some of this foul Avernite mushroom ale, wincing with each sip. He motions for you to sit with him. I'm Goodman Wolf. Nice to see some of my kind. It's been a lonely time down here. It's odd that he calls himself Goodman. On the surface, that title actually means that the person is a landowner. How is the ale? He takes another sip and winces. It's cheap, all I can say for it. Try it. Sure. You take a sip of the infamous Avernite Mushroom Ale. It tastes like, well, you would expect mushroom ale to. It's an intriguing blend of raw potato, moist dirt, and old sock. Clearly an acquired taste of the truly desperate. You hand the mug back. Wolf nods sympathetically. Been in Avernum long? A few months. I'm a farmer, or I was. I'm trying to establish a claim down here so that I can set up and bring my family down to join me. But it's very difficult. How did you get permission to come down to Avernum? It's a lottery. Far more want to come down than are allowed. We're lucky that Empress Prozac, God's protector, lets anyone come down at all. Why are things so difficult? Because to start a farm, I need land. I need to make a claim. It was impossible to get land on the surface, and now it is impossible to get land here. Everywhere decent and safe has been taken. He looks at you, noting your weaponry. He smiles. Say, can't I help the fellow exile from the surface? Believe it or not, I can pay. I'll help if I can. There's some good land east of here near the river. I'd claim it in a second, but it's dangerous. There's a crazy living out there. Calls himself the Rat Lord. He breeds rats. Likes Rickus, but keeps to himself more. Anyway, the mayor will probably send someone to evict the Rat Lord soon. If I knew exactly when it was safe, I'd go out there and claim some land for myself. You got rid of the Rat Lord and let me know first, I'd give you one of the things I snuck down here from the surface. You'd be helping someone in the same fix you're in. Why is he called the Rat Lord? Because he breeds la rats. He likes them. He's not a wizard, he's just a guy that likes rats. Avenites are crazy, what can you do? Uh... There is so little land on the surface? Most is held by the rich. There were some left on the continent of Valorum, but most of that was given by Empress Prazak to the Avenites to give the worms who wanted to return to the surface a place to live. I like Empress Prazak all right, but a lot of people were very angry that she gave so much land to the... to them. Yes, I can only imagine. Well, let's see if there's anything in these rooms. Maybe we'll find something good. That door is locked. Interesting. I wonder why it's locked, and what's in there. Hey, coins! Okay, and up in this side is... towels and stuff. Storage, it looks like. And coins! Coins, coins, coins. And a disruption wand. Well, that's a thing. Huzzah for coins! All right, now back to exploring the rest of this place, including the job board. A scroll has been tacked to this wall. It is torn and scorched. Whoever was carrying it before, he or she ran into some trouble. It is addressed to Gladwell the Wizard, Northern Isles, urgent. Someone has left something odd on this job board. It is an intricately carved spiral of blue crystal suspended from a leather thong. There is a tag on it which reads, To Mabile, Harkins Landing, Drake Pillars, Payment on Delivery. Might be worth delivering it, should you find out where Harkin's Landing is. The self-described Rat Lord has begun to bother merchants and travelers going to and from New Harston. Mayor Solney declares a bounty to be paid in valuable crystals to whoever can whittle down his army of hideous rats. The killer of twenty of the creatures in his lair should report to the mayor for the reward. There is a pulsing blob of slime that has been damaging the crops to the southeast of New Harston. The owner of those lands, Mother Alice, will pay a generous cash bounty to the adventurer who can destroy this hideous monster. Said adventurer will also receive two complimentary stakes of the highest quality. Stakes? Yay. So what's in here? Private residence. This woman is remarkably well-dressed and stylish for an Avernite. Why, the clothes on her back were the height of fashion five or six years ago. She looks irritated. Well, I did want to contact you. 
There has been a shortage of adventurers recently, and I thought that I might be able to pay for you for assistance. This is still true, even though you broke into my house. I am called Mother Alice. A gentle and friendly name, though its owner seems to be neither. I own a fair amount of land around here. I sometimes need help managing and expanding my claims. I would pay well for your assistance. You are wealthy? By Avonite standards, I am. Maybe even by surface standards, too. I was one of the first people to take the risk of coming to New Harston, and one of the first to make claims. I was well regarded for the gamble. What was the gamble? That New Harston might end up like Harston. In a vernum, the first people to go anywhere tend to end up eaten. And the second people, too. So you claimed land. How does that work? I do not wish to discuss the minutiae of a vernum law with you. I would simply say that the person who wishes to own a piece of an bare stone needs to register it with the mayor, and they protect it for... <sighs> Never mind, it's not important to you. Night. Mother Alice sits at her table, sips like in tea, and quietly ponders the business of the day. If the presence of a well-armed Empire soldier bothers her, she doesn't show it. You notice that her clothes are tailored to look best in the dim green light of a vernum. They are almost lovely. Nice clothes! Thank you. I had them per personally tailored on the surface and teleported down. My most expensive and ridiculous luxury. You wish my assistance? I do. All of the local adventurers have headed into the northern frontier for easier money, forcing me to resort to trying to bribe you. There is someone I want evicted. Mayor Salni has given me permission. He is a madman called the Rat Lord. He lives in the caves east of here. Get rid of him. Report to me quickly without telling anyone else so that I can claim the lands and I, I will pay you very well. The Rat Lord? Is he a wizard of some kind? No, just an idiot who likes rats. No great loss. Get rid of him how? However you want. He has allowed his rats to attack travelers and merchants. Some have been horribly wounded, so I can assure you that no Avonite would raise a stink if you killed him. He has it coming, I assure you. What do you do with your land? Farm it. Mushrooms, lichen, beneficial herbs. Avernum's population grows and we need more and more food, and I will provide it. For a healthy price. Great. Some of the townsfolk... Okay. Great. So... Two people want us to tell them about this, about evicting the Rat Lord without telling the other person. Fantastic. We're going to have to decide. And can't go in there. Great. Oh well, we'll see. Next, who have we got? Lark, Hedge Wizard. Ooh. This is a mage's workshop. It is an active one. You are surrounded by bubbling pots and pylons shooting out constant flows of energy. Your skin starts to tingle. In the magical tradition of respect for the safety of regular townsfolk, this building is right here in town so that any accidents can cause a maximum amount of damage. Lovely. This pylon is a metal framework holding a large crystal. A constant flow of tiny wisps of energy emerges from the crystal and travels to a neighboring pylon. You touch one of the wisps. It tickles. Not a lot of power here right now. You meet New Harston's mage in residence. She seems friendly enough. She approaches to greet you, taking pains to keep clear of the magical pylons. She isn't as pale and thin as the other Avonites in town. She has been in Avernum for a while, but you doubt that she was born here. She seems very distracted, although all the magical machinery in her lab distracts you, too. Welcome, warrior. I am Lark, hedge wizard of New Harston. I have been very busy of late, but not so much that I can't speak with the envoys from the Empire. I'm sure that I have offers that can interest you. What do you do here? I am the Hedge Wizard. Our kind takes up residence in the poor and put upon villages of Avernum, and provides services for good regular people. It is not as flashy as a career in the Tower of Magi, but it is very rewarding. However, of late, my services have been needed in other areas, too. What do the good regular people need? Pets incinerated, attacking cave monsters repulsed, the occasional healing brew or love potion, and so on. You can make potions. Not really, not the sort of potions you would need. Weaker brews that heal a wound in a week instead of a minute. There is an alchemist just outside town, though. Just leave by the north road. You can't miss it. Follow your nose. How else have your services been required? I've been helping Avernum to make the nearby portal and the pylons. They need a lot of components to help focus the energy. I have been providing them. Oh, I wasn't supposed to talk about that. Uh, never mind. 
Where is this portal? <sighs> it's to the east, not far, but they won't let you in. Please don't say I told you I'd get shouted at. Huh. So that's what those are for. Lark putters around her laboratory, adjusting the pylons, adding herbs to the bubbling mixture, and humming happily. She occasionally chats with you about gossip, current events, and what passes down here for the weather. Glad you are still here. I think I have much to offer you. She is very friendly and outgoing for a mage. I'm not sure whether this should worry you more or less. Can you teach me magic? Ah, you won't be the first citizen of the Empire to slip down here for a little unauthorized magic. I know that well. I don't know many spells that will help you in a combat situation, but I would happily teach them to you. Always happy to give a little thumb in the eye to my friends upstairs. She points up at the surface. Icy rain! We don't have... Oh, But I want icy rain! Ah, we need coin. Are you from the Empire? I am. I came down years ago looking for a place where I could study magic in peace, where I could cast a spell without filling out a form first. I'd be careful down here if I were you. You might find that freedom gets addictive once you experience enough of it. What do you have to offer me? A mutually beneficial exchange. I have skill in recipes. You wander around and beat things up. I hear a lot about the creatures of the northern frontier. If you were to bring me certain components, I could make powerful potions. If you'd like to begin the hunt, let me know, and I can give you a target. Where did you learn your recipes? I have spent years hiring adventurers to bring me old and valuable magical texts from all over. At last, I can begin to profit from this knowledge. In particular, I got a marvelous prize, a book of alchemical notes from the infamous Erica Redmark herself. I would love to complete her work, but to do that I need ingredients, and to get them I need you. Who is Erica Redmark? Quite possibly the greatest mage in the history of Avernum. She helped to develop and improve most of the underground plants and animals that keep us alive. She helped create the Tower of Magi and other schools of magical learning. Also, she helped to assassinate Empress Prazek's predecessor. She didn't like the Empire very much. Bit of a sore spot, I suppose, but ancient history now. Anyway, she's dead, but her knowledge lives on. I'd like to begin a hunt. I am pleased to hear it. Let me describe your first target. It's not far from here, I believe. The foul and wicked Aranea, spiders infused with powerful magical energy, have mostly been eradicated from our lands. One remains. It calls itself Bak Bakaba, and it lurks in the tunnels northwest of this town. Bring me its spinnerets, and I can make a brew which will infuse us with some of its magic. Hmm. Sounds interesting. I'll gladly do so. Ooh. That looks like... This is one of Lark's old spell books. It is full of copied bits of strange old lore. Looks like she has collected, or had someone collect, bits of arcane knowledge from all over Avernum. You browse through Lark's spellbook, but you can't understand any of it. You don't know enough magical lore. Is that enough? Nope. And it looks like there's something there, but I can't hit it. Yeah, neither of those open. Okay. Yeah, it looks like there's a secret button there, but I can't hit it. Oh well. Oh, still so much to look through. Shrine of the Anama. All weary travelers are welcomed. You enter a shrine of the Anama. The Anama are a peculiar lot. Your trainers made sure to warn you about them before you were sent to Avernum. The Anama reject magic. They feel that wizardry should not be practiced in any form. It's centric at best. Empress Prazek has strongly encouraged them to leave the Empire. Even her tolerance has limits. And yet here they are, providing succor to these cave dwellers and to the adventurers heading for the northern frontier. They are an odd lot, but they are friendly. Can't hurt to look around. There are several travelers in this temple, resting before the frightening journey into the northern frontier. When you try to speak with them, they wave you off. They want to be alone. The Anama minister walks through the temple, providing assistance to the people kneeling here. They don't look like members of the Anama, but like people stopping to rest on their way to the northern frontier. To some of them, he gives advice or a kind word. Others receive a simple healing spell to cure minor wounds received during the journey here. Then he sees you. Surprisingly, he doesn't seem at all taken aback by having soldiers of the Empire in his shrine. He approaches and greets you. I am Minister Pilhofer. The Anama welcome all who come in peace, to aid those who travel, who are troubled, and who wish to evade the scourge of magic in our world. Can you tell me about this shrine? All travelers who come in peace are welcome here. We aid who we can, how we can. This has made us very welcome here. 
Of course, if you wish to learn something of our beliefs, we are very eager to teach. What do the travelers need? Very little, usually, just advice and a kind word. They are risking much to travel into the northern frontier. Here, at the edge of Avernum, a bit of friendliness and a bowl of stew are all it takes to refresh them before the hard times ahead. All right. Tell me about the Anama. I am pleased that you asked. We believe in the individual. We believe that each person has great power within, power to aid others, power that should be cherished and encouraged through quiet and contemplation. This holy power has an opposite, the power of magic, power that is grabbed from outside, power that comes without wisdom, power that, in fact, erases wisdom. That is the way of the Anama. Aiding others is important. It is the only thing that is important. Tranquility, safety, happiness, what else has value? And these things can only come by working in peace with others. So you really don't use magic? No. Look around the world. Everything we gain from magic is paid for with two harms. Consider the damage done to this village by the mad mage Rickus. To a mage, all acts are justified by having the power to commit them. We do not need magic to live. The lack of magic, however, will enable us to live better lives. But without magic, life in Avernum would be impossible. This is true, and perhaps Avernum should never have been created in the first place. But what is done is done. Until we can all return to our rightful places in the sun, I will minister to the Avernites as best I can. I'm afraid I don't agree with you about the magic thing. Yes, it does great harm, but it also does great good. As it said, Without magic, a vernum would be impossible. I am not surprised. Few can voluntarily give up power, even if that is the path of wisdom. I can only hope that the things you witness in these lands might change your mind. But I am boring you, I am sure. Anything else that you would like to know? You minister to many travelers? It is my current quest. It takes up much of my time, but it is a marvelous opportunity to share our faith. A kind word, a bowl of stew, a blessing. It works wonders. And I tell them about the Anama in the northern frontier. It can be useful to me. Sometimes, for example, I can use the travelers to send messages. Do you get many converts? No, but I get more than I would if I did not try. What sort of blessing can you give? Simply a prayer, a kind word, a benediction. It doesn't do much, but it eases the soul. Would you like a blessing? Sure, why not? The, the minister places his hand on your head and mutters a short prayer. Your skin tingles slightly. He removes his hand. I wish you safety in your travels ahead and freedom from ignorance and fear. I wish you to inflict no cruelty, and I hope that you are far from the cruelty of others. Perhaps I can deliver a message for you? I am afraid not. Not until you are going to the northern frontier, which I doubt you are. Minister Pilhoffer speaks happily with you, only occasionally leaving to greet and aid a newcomer. He is very interested in learning what the surface is like. Based on the questions he asks, you suspect that he is an Avernite native. Can you teach me any spells? We and Arma are happy to share our prayers and chants, the keys that unlock the holy power within us. Of course, the Empire would not approve of your having unauthorized power, but I won't tell them. Summon Shade and Enduring Shield. Nice spells, but we can't. Hmm. The altar is enchanted. It emits a constant flow of beneficial energy, enabling you to slowly recover from your wounds. The Anama may not use magic, but they aren't without power. They derive it from meditation and from the energy within, instead of drawing it from arcane sources. You feel slightly rejuvenated. Yay. And here's the upper level. The Anama apprentices are friendly, but quiet. They aren't supposed to speak much under any circumstances. Yes. Not really anything in there. That is locked. And that is locked. Probably quests we're going to have. I feel like there might be something hidden over here. Eh, guess I was wrong. Hmm. Oh, nice little park. And over here is... Ah! Most of this region is very warm, heated by the enormous steam vents to the southwest. This open building is even hotter. You almost immediately start to sweat under your armor. The Slytherakai Smith, however, seems entirely comfortable. His smooth reptilian skin is perfectly dry as he smacks into shape a piece of white-hot iron. 
When you enter, he sets down his hammer and approaches you. Sss. I am Vouch. This is my smithy. I will deal with the Empire, but it is not welcome. It's pretty warm in here. We smiths feel temperature better than you. We wish the heat. That is why we make such good smiths. What do you have against the Empire? We civilized slips. We are loyal parts of Avernum, and we have shared in the suffering your kind inflicts upon us. We share this in the resentment. Once the Empire killed all intelligent things who are not human. They may do so one day again. The Empire has changed. It even allows Nephilim and Slizerakai into the army. How kind of it. With another few centuries of this kindness, perhaps we will forget a few of your crimes. There are uncivilized with Zerkai? He frowns. When the humans came to the underworld, we were here. We were mad. We started war. But many of us have come to sanity and peace. Few of the mad ones remain. And that is all of our private business I will share. I return to work now. Can I trade with you? Something unusual happens. The Slith blinks. The mayor has sent word. For her own reasons, we are to allow you here to, and trade with you. You are not welcomed or like, but I will buy and sell. Uh, nothing we need to buy. I mean, the Iron Spear would be nice, but I need to save our, up our coin. And nothing for us to sell. Okay! That has been a very long episode. I did not expect Harston to take that much time. So, next episode, I suppose we'll look to the south and west of New Harston... Maybe to the north. I think we'll save looking to the west for later, because there's areas to the east I want to clear out. I want to clear out all that before we take care of Hericus, who I think was in Myrtis. I feel that. But that'll be in the next episode. So until then, I'm Trusting44. That is uh, Darren, Thomas, Lena, and Sherry. This has been an Avernum 5 Let's Play, and I shall see you all next time.